All right, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We remember this, and my name is Carl and Page, and I try to uh, teach a Sunday school lesson, and uh, I hope that you uh, will get a blessing out of it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the song service, all of you, because uh, there's a lot of things that we have to depend upon the Lord for, and uh, some of those songs were uh, uh, to let us know that we're, His grace is sufficient. Amen. And that He's always watching after us. We're going to study some this morning in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. <clears throat> He's turning there, and I'm going to be talking about a probably a fairly decent young man by the name of Naaman. And uh, he had problems. And so, 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman, now in verse 1 of chapter 5 of the 2 second, second Kings. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria he was also a mighty man in valor or great courage and brave but he was a leper <laughs> and he had a problem people and uh right. you know this leper see in the scriptures is a type of sin <laughs> and uh the only way that it can be was ever healed is by the priest doing what that God had told them to do or by Jesus Christ touching them and healing them. And then we see that this leprosy as a type of sin can only be healed by Jesus Christ's death on the cross. Amen. And His blood paid the atonement for our sins. His blood covering our sins were that when He approaches God to uh, to intercede for us and to uh, uh, forgive us of our sins that God cannot see that sin. And so here we see Naaman, a captain, had a very important role in, uh, in the armies because he was over the armies. And he was, he was as they said, a leper. And uh, in verse 2 it says here, And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Now I want you to notice something here, that the little maid had come out of Israel. She was in bondage, she was in captivity, but if you'll notice her, her love towards Naaman or her desire to help him, no doubt she was a Christian person, and she had a desire to help him and her being under bondage and she was waiting on his wife but notice this this morning in verse 3 <clears throat> and she said unto her mistress would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy and so he's saying to his wife if Naaman was in the country where I lived, there is a prophet there that will recover him of this leprosy. And this leprosy, you remember, this leprosy was worse than cancer. Mm -hmm. the leprosy was a deadly, slow death. And everyone that uh, had this leprosy was contagious. Mm -hmm. And they had to be outside of the city and their, their loved ones would bring them food and clothing to, to, to draw, uh, clothing to wear and food to eat because they couldn't come in the city because they were contagious with this disease and others would catch it. And so they were, they were cast out. And uh, we see that, uh, that Naaman, even in, his, even in his position as captain over all of these people, the king, the king wanted to see him heal. And he heard through the grapevine, if you would, that this little maid had said these words. Now notice, and, and in, in verse 4, after she had said this, 
And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith this the maid that is in the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. Now, we see here that the king thought a lot of Naaman. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to see him healed because I'm sure that he wanted to be closer to Naaman because uh, Naaman was uh, under him as a leader. And so he says, this is what I'll do. I'll send that king that's over in Israel where this little maid come from and I'll tell him, hey, you tell this prophet or you do whatever you've got to do to get this boy healed and I'm going to send him to you. And this upset the king of Israel mm -hmm. terribly because this was an unhealable disease and he could not do anything about it. And he was, they, Syria was fixing to, uh, they had already took captives from Israel and they were going back in and they were going to, to, to take more and maybe destroy them. But anyway, here, it's what he, he, and, and verse 6, and he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have there, therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God? to kill and to make alive that this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy wherefore consider i pray you and see how you seek a quarrel against me so he understood right away that uh he couldn't do nothing about this letter and uh he thought maybe that they was uh just wanted to, to start a quarrel against them and, and he, he seemed right away that he couldn't do nothing. Well, I got to thinking about these things here. And you know, <clears throat> as we live here in this country, and as we try to serve the Lord, you know, there's not a whole lot this morning that we have power to do. Right. We can pray for someone, and we can, we can continue praying for them. But as far as doing anything, physically or making a different appearance in their in their flesh or whatever we can't do it right and uh, of course i know some of these doctors think that they can whittle and cut and do all this and do that and they can do it but they can't i, I mean it's all in god's hands amen and he's the one that we have to look look forward uh look to to, to do these things and so this this man naaman he went to see him and there is a uh, here is a, a, a thing I, I, I got such a blessing out of. Uh, in verse 8 of this, of this uh, chapter, he says, And it was so when Elisha, 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 the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Amen. Now, uh, this, this man Elijah, he was, there was one before him by the name of Elijah. And this man was Elisha. And he was walking with Elijah one day. And Elijah asked him, what would you have me, what would you have the Lord to do for me, for you? And he said, and Elijah had done all of these many miracles, and he had raised the dead and all this. And Elisha said unto him, that the Lord might grant me twice as much as you have done. Amen. And so Elijah, he didn't know what to tell him. He says, well whatever the Lord will see. And if you if you see me when I leave this earth, he says, your, your answer will be granted or your prayer be, will be answered. And so it happened that way. Now Elijah, Elijah uh, was, was 
going and going and Elisha was following him and he tried to get Elisha to stay back and uh, not go with him and Elisha said I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, stay back I'm going to go with you and I'm going to see when you leave well he seen him and he seen the chariot of fire come down and he took Elisha up with him and uh, he got his prayer answered well this Elisha here that we're talking about now had the power to do these things and he so he's told this king here now he says hey he said don't tear your clothes off of you and don't do this and don't do that but he said you just send the man here to me and so sure enough this is what the king did and so in verse 9 so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha and Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean now this this man Naaman he kind of got wroth about the thing because he remember was a captain over all of these people and he said you do this or you do that or do this or do that they done it and so he said but Naaman in verse 11 but Naaman was wroth and went away and said behold I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hands over the place and recover the leprosy so he was expecting great things out of Elisha well, Elisha was going to show him a thing or two. Amen. And he did. <coughs> and so we see here that he had a friend there in verse 12, or not a, uh, a, a, B, a banner, and these are two rivers. Uh, and the reason that this is said like this is because that uh, the Jordan was a very muddy and uh, a little small river. But he says, are not these two rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And that, to me, you know, and that's, that's the flesh for you. That's Amen. the type of flesh. That's the type of, of people that, that don't get their way with things. And they think they're a little bit better than others. And they don't get their way with things. Well, uh, you know, God's got... God, God's got uh, uh, a thing for uh, us, and a lot of times uh, He does us this away in order to get our attention. Because so many times, you know, we we think that uh, things ought to go this way when they they're not pleasing to the Lord, they're not good for us. Because you know, any time that you that you have something that you think is right for you. You do, a little, you do a little soul searching about it and you ask the Lord about it because a lot of times we are a very selfish right. person. Amen. This flesh that I have and the flesh that you have, and I'm going to tell you something if you don't know it, this flesh that we have cannot be saved. Amen. It can't be saved. It's sinful. And it, it desires... It desires the things of the world which is sinful. It desires to be selfish. It desires to have its way about things. And this is one of the very important things about a person that's, that's living a Christian life. You need to understand what is going on in this flesh of yours. Your flesh this morning inherited sin from Adam and Eve. Amen. Adam and Eve was the first two created and they sinned. Adam and Eve had a child, they had a child, they had a child, and started this world with all of uh, all the wickedness that and Adam disobeyed God, and that's the reason why that he had this sin. But listen, we inherited that when we were born of our mothers. We inherited that sin. This flesh, this flesh, the Bible says, 
that you do not put no confidence whatsoever in this flesh. Amen. Because this flesh, what it wants to do is it wants to do what it thinks is right. And so many people this day and time are like this man Naaman. They think that whatever they eternally need, they can work it out here upon this earth. And they have no, really have no need of God and, and Jesus Christ and the blood that Jesus Christ shed on his earth. They don't have no need for it. And this is the same thing that Naaman, Naaman said, hey, this little muddy stream that you've got here, why can't I go back to home and, and they got two beautiful clear rivers that I can crawl, crawl into and I can do that seven times. But you see, that wasn't the way. Amen. That wasn't God's way and it's not God's way today when we take it upon our own self to feel like that we can work out our own salvation. Because when we stand before God and He's and we're depending upon our works, He's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Right. And that's that is a that is a that is a true thing, and it's it's something that we need to understand that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can e in inherit eternal life in heaven with Him. And so when, when these things come about, and when these decisions come about, you make a practice of asking the Lord. You make a practice of when you sit down and eat at the table, if it ain't nothing but a piece of little cornbread, you give God the glory for it. You Amen. give Him the thanks because He put it to her. Amen. And He puts all of these things in our lives that we that we have and we need. And listen, when things are not going well with you, don't get upset at God. Don't get upset at Jesus Christ and say, well, you don't care anything about me. You don't love me. Listen, He knows what's best for you. Amen. And He... He will surely help you out if you'll just listen to him. And this is the same way with Naaman. Uh, 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 uh. Elisha was telling him the truth. Elisha, Elisha was a prophet and he had the power to do these things. And so we see here, after this messenger went to Nathan, Nathan got all upset and wroth and, 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 and said all he did. In verse, in verse 13, he had a friend. And that this morning, a lot of times, is what we need mm -hmm. is a friend when we get out of the will of the Lord to tell us, hey, listen, who died on the cross of Calvary for you? Was it some other man over here that's a millionaire that wouldn't give you a piece of bread if you're starving to death? No, Jesus Christ died for you. And so when Jesus Christ stands before before God, He vouches for you. And so when He speaks to you through the Holy Spirit, you need to listen. Amen. You need to obey what He's saying. So here we see His, sir, uh, his friend come to Him uh, in verse 13. And His servant came near and spake unto Him. Now listen, He was a servant. Remember this. Uh, I said He was a friend. He wasn't a friend. He was a servant. And the servants were were under the authority of him and i'm sure that he feared even that naaman would uh backhand him or uh take him out there and have him killed because he had the power to do it but anyway the servant came near and spake unto him and said my father if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing would thou not have done it how much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean. Now he's, he's just laying it down on the line like he should be. And that's the way with us. If if Jesus, if if Jesus through the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart and say, hey, this is the way to do it. But no, the flesh and the devil says, no, you need to do it this way. You listen to that spirit. You listen to the Holy Spirit, what he says for you. And so he said here, how much rather then when he saith to thee, wash and be clean. Then in verse 14, then when he down <clears throat> and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, <clears throat> and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Amen. Friend, I'll tell you what, 
if that don't make you joy, if that don't, if that just don't bubble you over, I don't know what it takes to do it. Because Amen. Listen, I was I was reading that and I was studying that this morning, uh, and I got such a blessing out of it, and uh, that he, even though he was like he was, he listened. He listened to this man. Because the man brought it down to himself. <clears throat> hey, listen, <clears throat> it ain't gonna take no effort on your part <clears throat> to go down here to Jordan and dip in, in seven times. And listen, it, it's not gonna take a whole lot of effort on our part to listen to what the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts and tells us about and what God's Word says to us. Because if God's Word says to us, hey, you don't need to steal, you don't need to kill, you don't need to uh, do this and do that. Listen, we need to listen to this because it's very simple. We don't need to. And and so many people are not listening to these the, the God's Word. And so he listened uh, to his servant. Finally, <clears throat> And then look in verse 15. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now I want to show you something this morning, people. This is this is Elisha did a, did a thing here that exalted the, the God of heaven. He exalted because Naaman said, I know now for sure that your God is the God of heaven. Now that's the thing this morning that we need to think about this morning is exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, exalting God of heaven. And, and we can do it this morning through the love of God. If we, Amen. If we if we try to serve him and ask him to let us be a servant to him, he'll let us be a servant, and we can exalt these uh, the these uh, the God of heaven and, and and tell others about him. And that's this morning what that we need to have a desire in our hearts to do this morning is to be able to tell someone somewhere or pray for someone somewhere. Lord, let me be a help to them somewhere. Amen. Or let me pray for them. And this is what he said here. He said, I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Now he's changed his tune. He ain't mad. He's, he's glad. And he's offering him something. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, a lot of times... He wants, we, we, we try to offer something to somebody, try to make level the ground. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pay them back. But now, this didn't happen with him. Now, notice here, in verse 16, after he offered him this blessing, this, this money, and these clothing and all this, but he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, this is Elijah talking, Elisha, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, burdened of earth, burdens of earth, for thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offerings nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. And so he said, Can I give them to your servant? Because I know when he sacrifices, he's going to sacrifice to the Lord. Now, in verse 18, In this thing the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my master, my master, now he's talking about his master back at, uh, in Syria. In this thing the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Remnant to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Remnant. When I bow down myself in the house of Remnant, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he, he knew that he had to go back, and his king would, would still go back to this house, and he was an idolater. He would worship idols and statues and things of this nature. But Naaman had to go with him. And he held his hand and he said, when I do that, and he falls down and worships this statue, he says, I pray that you'll pray for me that I'll be forgiven. Because he knew it was wrong then, because he said, I know now that 
it's your God that is, is the God of heaven. And, but he's, he knows when he went back, he had to face this thing. So here's what he, and, and he said here in verse, uh, the latter part of 18, when I bow down myself in the house of Remnant, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, go in peace. So he departed from him a little ways. And so he's trying to get everything lined up here. And so he, Elisha had a, a servant by the name of Gehesha. And in verse 20, we'll see what happened to him. But Gehesha, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, this, this Syria, in not receiving at the hands of, of, of that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take some of somewhat of him. So Gesha followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? So we see here that Naaman has, has got a change of heart. That's the first thing you want to is all well. And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophet. Lied to him. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. And Naaman said, Be, be content. Take two talents instead of one talent. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver into two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon him on two of his servants and they buried them before him and when he came to the tower he took them from their hands and bestowed them in the house and he let the men go and they departed so the men the servants of Naaman carried it back for him and he took it from them and hid it now notice what he said but he went in and stood before his master and Elisha said unto him Whence comest thou, Gehatha? And he said, Thy servants went no thy servant went no weather. Lied again. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, it is is it a time to receive money, to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever and he went out from the presence of a leper as white as snow mm. and so we see here that uh, it wasn't the time to receive gifts because they were in a time of, uh, of well, Syria was fixing to come in and take them over because we would read over in the next chapter or two therefore that they uh, they were going to and the Lord protected them and uh, defeated them or run them off. But anyway, uh, this this man here, Gehatha, Gehasai, I think it is, he knew what Elijah could do, but he was worthy. And he had a desire for those clothes and that money. And so he went and told Naaman a lie to get them. And then he told his master a lie and thinking he would keep them. And we see what kind of trouble he got into because it not only he was a leper, but his whole family. Right. And uh, it was passed down. And listen, as I told you a while ago, Leprosy is a type of sin, and we need to remember this, that the sin that we have in our life, if, if, we, don't, if we don't get forgiveness for it, listen, it could be passed down to the third and fourth generation of our, of our children. So, you know, these are some of the things that we need to think about concerning this little story that was put in there because it was put in here for our benefit to show us what that we needed to do and in this in this this we read there was a a uh, 
saying that when the when the when the leper went to the priest to have him pray for him, he would do certain things. And one of them was that he had two birds. And he would kill one and let the other one go. Type of uh, Jesus Christ and of the sinner. And also of uh, uh, he would he would uh, uh, Kill, he would kill the one which was the type of Jesus Christ and let the other one go which is us, the sinner. And so uh, this is something else that you might study on and uh, if you want to continue studying this it might uh, draw things a little bit uh, closer to you and, and help you a little bit more because it's, it, it all points to Jesus Christ. Amen. So we thank you all for listening this morning for our, to our uh, lesson and I hope that it's been a blessing to you too to hear this and that you can take it with you and <clears throat> if you have an opportunity uh, if it was uh, if I was giving out you a big old cake you could take it and share it with your friends well you can take and share this with your friends too mm -hmm. thank y'all